Okay, this is the term three, week four, math C8. Uh, most of it is new, uh, but uh, there are some questions repeated from last week. Uh, it mainly is about the exponential functions. Okay, an exponential function. Some of you may be familiar with it, especially if you're taking IGC. Well, no, if you're taking IGC, I see math. You won't have math CA this week. Anyways, um, if uh, we've done exponential functions before, uh, some of you are familiar with it. But the exponential function uh, follows uh, follows the the structure a to the power of x. Remember, we used to have x squared, x cubed. No, now x is actually in the power. Okay, so for example, 2 to the x, that is an exponential function. There are some characteristics about the exponential function. The main one is the domain is any real number. Okay, but the range, sorry, the range is y greater than b. What do I mean by this? Let me show you. In this case, you're going to ask me, Walid, what, what do you mean? There's only a and there's only x. Where, where did you get b from? Okay, this is the general form of an exponential function. It's usually a to the x. But sometimes you might have a to the x and then they put another number, plus b. Okay, the range is always y is greater than b. But sometimes they only write it as a to the x. In this case, the asymptote will be y is greater than 0. Okay, I know it might sound confusing, but let me explain. For example, the graph 2 to the power of x. Okay, I'm going to draw it. 2 to the power of x looks like this. I'm going to draw it in blue. Okay. It looks like this. As it continues, it doesn't go down. Because 2 to the power of x has, an, has the range, y is always greater than b. And in this case, there's no b. So in this case, y is always greater than 0. So the asymptote in this case is y equals 0. Always the asymptote is y equals b. OK? So in this case, y equals 0 would be the purple line I'm going to draw. Okay, it can't cross this. This is the asymptote. Okay, how about y equals 2 to the x plus 2? Well, now it's going to be a similar graph. Okay, except the graph wasn't, it's not going to look like this. Okay, we said that the range is y greater than b. And in this case, our b is 2, so y has to be greater than 2. So do you think that the graph is going to start from here? No, 2 is all the way up here. So our y has to start from up here, it has to start from 2. So I'm going to erase my graph, and I'm going to redraw it. I'm going to draw it like this. Okay, and it can't cross this y equals 2. It can't cross it. So the asymptote is y equals 2. Okay, another easy way would be to use the transformation. If I were to have y equals a to the x, and then I have y equals a to the x plus 1. If you have this a to the x, and you want a to the x plus 1, an easy way to differentiate between them, a to the x plus 1 can be attained by shifting the graph upwards by one unit. If you remember when we used to have uh, the quadratic functions, like we had y equals x squared, right? Then we had y equals x, uh, x uh, sorry, y equals x squared plus 2. It would just be this graph, but shifted two units upwards. And this is y equals x squared, and then y equals x squared plus 2 would just be two units upwards. So similarly, in this case, if I have a to the x, I draw it for you. a to the x would be, in this case, the red graph. 
okay and then a to the x plus one would be the yellow graph which shifted upwards by one okay it's not accurate by one unit okay so you could write it like this okay but there would be another case i'm gonna label the red one a to the x and i'm gonna label the yellow one as a to the x plus one okay now i'm gonna show you one more transformation how about y equals a to the x plus one see now the plus one is in the power right okay if you remember when we used to have y equals x squared and the y equals x minus two squared this would just be this but two units to the right yeah this is just two units to the right so this would be x squared then x minus two squared would just be two units to the right yeah so what do you think would be the difference now between a to the x and a to the x plus one whenever you're adding in the power that means you're moving to the left okay if you're subtracting you move to the right similarly like here since we subtracted we move to the right if you guys remember from term one i think it was always the opposite for uh, the horizontal shift left and right it's always the opposite when you add you go to the left and when you subtract you go to the right so when i'm adding in the power that means i'm going one to the left so let's let me draw it in purple now so this was a to the x now i want to shift it to the left it will be like this that's it that's a to the x plus one it's gonna pass through every uh every point but just one one unit before if you get what i mean okay it's just shifted to the left it's not above it it's to the left so like this i explained what an exponential function is it's always when you have a power okay and it's always the asymptote y is greater than b okay so don't get confused when you have a to the x plus one it's still y greater than zero because you don't have any b we only added in the power and that doesn't count okay it only counts when you're adding as the base okay so in this case it would be y greater than one for here because b is one and the asymptote would be y equals one and by the way here you can see it's above uh sorry it's one would be here one would be over here okay uh see uh it would be above it the yellow one always has to be above the y equals one it can't cross it now i'm gonna give you the general term for writing an exponential okay this is the formula the ex exponential formula the exponential formula exponential formula is going to be one sorry no no it's going to be the initial let's call i times one plus r over 100 to the power of n. some of you here would say this looks familiar this is just the compound interest formula uh, which is correct because they are the compound interest is actually an exponential function so you can use this to write any exponential function you want you just use the formula i 1 plus r over 100 to the power of n now i think i gave everything uh, let's start okay so they're saying an exponential function f is defined such that the value of f of x that means y decreases by five percent so the rate is minus five percent yeah for each unit increase in x so r equals minus five percent the graph of the function has a y intercept of 55. y intercept of 55 that means it passes through 0 comma 55. y intercept means yani where does it cross the y axis so it crosses up here at 55 okay so it has the point 0 comma 55 which of the following could be the equation of this function so what what did we say the exponential equation was exponential formula it's always i 1 plus r over 100 to the power of n so let's go back here we got our rate is decreasing by 5%, so the rate is negative 5%. Okay, it's y intercept is 55, so we pass through 0, 0,55. So we want to use the exponential formula, and that is y equals i1 plus r over 100 to the power of n. n, or if you want, you could say x actually. 
replace this call this x not n okay do i have to rewrite it ya allah okay yeah five percent r equals minus five percent y intercept uh, 55 so 0 0.55 okay what's our formula y equals i one plus r over 100 to the power of x uh, you can write n whatever but usually it would be better to write x okay our interest okay sorry our initial i stands for initial amount initial initial means and i'm gonna it's gonna make it very easy for you when x equals zero okay that's it when x equals zero what do what's my y and usually they always give this okay and in this case they did they gave you the y intercept which is 55 and the y intercept means when x is zero i have 55 that's what y intercept means and when your x is zero you're going to get 55 so i have my initial my initial when x equals zero i have 55 what now one plus r over 100 r is negative 5 so negative 5 over 100 to the power of x and you can simplify this 1 plus negative 5 over 100 is actually 0 0.95 and then you keep it to the power of x and this is your formula so let me save this go to question 2 okay question 2 now uh, they give you uh, a formula uh, they give you the function is 5 plus 70e to the power of minus 0 0.014 okay so they give you this is the volume okay v uh, of a balloon okay of the air in the balloon after t minutes so t is the time okay when they poked a hole inside the balloon so you know when you pop a balloon you poke a hole it starts deflating air that's why the rate is negative by the way Elman, they poked the they poked the hole in the, in the balloon the volume of the air starts decreasing okay they want the volume of the air in the balloon before it started being deflated okay so what's this what's happening here is we're deflating a balloon right so when we're deflating a balloon as soon as the time starts that's when we deflate the balloon so if they want the time if they want if they want the volume before it started being deflated that means they want the volume at time equals zero right before it starts being deflated time equals zero so let's plug in zero here right let's plug in zero as our time t is zero right so it's going to be five plus 70e to the power of minus 0 0.04 times 0 because t is 0 yeah okay then you can just put this in your calculator by the way 5 plus 70 then uh, uh, let, me, let me see can i put this in my calculator yeah you can put this in your calculator and uh, you can get 75 directly but for those of you who don't have the e in their calculator you can put 5 plus 70e negative 0 0.04 times 0 is 0 okay and you know anything to the power of 0 is 1 right so anything to the power of 0 is 1 so it's going to be 5 plus 70 times 1 okay since e to the power of 0 is 1 anything to the power of 0 is 1 and you're going to get 75 yeah 5 plus 70 is 75 very easy save question 3 uh, the exponential function okay f is defined that f of 0 equals 5 okay and the value of x increases 10 times when x increases by 1 okay which of the following represents the formula okay what was our formula we said i 1 plus r over 100 to the power of x right this was our formula okay but you're going to tell me what's the rate here if it's 10 times right okay if you want instead of all of this you can just put 10 okay but how this can work with the formula if you're multiplying something by 10 that means you're increasing it by 900 percent okay because um, if how, how can i explain this so if you want like for example uh you have five cups uh, sorry you have a cup that costs five dollars okay then you want to multiply it by 10 times if you do five times 900 percent okay uh you're gonna get uh 900 over 100 because 900 percent is 900 over 100 you're gonna get 45 so this would be the increase right of nine uh, of 900 percent 
but you always add your initial you do your plus five and you're going to end up getting 50 which is the same as just doing times 10. so what i'm trying to say is if you have a rate like for example 10 times or two times you can just replace this one plus r over 100 by that rate okay by two or ten but this r over 100 you only use it when they give it to you as a percent okay but if they don't give it to you as a percent and they say 1.7 times or seven times you can just put i times like if it was seven times seven to the power of x okay so uh you can use whatever you want but this formula i gave you is four percent okay and it works like this but if you want to use the rate when you have times you have to do uh, it's, it's a bit more confusing so i just advise you to just put in the times immediately into the brackets and just remove all of this it will become i 10 to the power of x okay so now that we have i 10 to the power of x okay because we put 10 times that's our, that's our whole rate now we need our i i is our initial amount right initial amount and that is when x equals zero so huh? and they're saying here it equals five right when x equals zero the function is five so i equals five so i can replace it with five ten to the power of x that's it all you have to do is apply the formula and if they give you a rate a given rate you can just substitute all of this and just put 10 okay only when they give you a rate but if they said 10 percent it increases by 10 percent you have to do 1 plus 10 over 100 but here they said 10 times okay so there's wordplay so be careful uh question four uh okay so they gave us length of wires and they gave you jumpers so uh they gave us tables uh, and there's some relationship between the numbers the table shows the length of the wires an electrician used to make the different numbers of jumpers based on the table describe the relationship between the wires and the numbers of jumpers okay they want the relationship so we have to look you know what's what's happening between these two okay so let's see between four and eight we multiplied by two five and ten again multiplied by two seven and fifteen it's not multiplying by two but it's approximately right so we can say approximately multiply by two nine and nineteen again it's approximately multiplying by two and ten and twenty one approximately multiplying by two okay so we could say that we're almost multiplying by two everywhere so we could say it's approximately linear okay linear meaning you just multiply linear is y equals mx plus b so you're just multiplying x by something that's what linear means linear means you're just multiplying by one thing okay so we could say it's approximately linear because you're almost multiplying by two and what's the constant we said approximately two okay uh question five okay question three uh sure question three question five okay they gave you the formula okay and they want you to interpret it uh on, hold on yeah so they gave you the formula and they want you to interpret they said the given equation estimates the reselling price p uh, of a car uh, after t years after its purchase what is the interpretation of the constant 0 0.95 okay so this 0 0.95 represents our 1 plus r over 100 right because you know the formula is i 1 plus r over 100 to the power of x right so this 0 0.95 represents r What's inside the bracket is the one plus r over one hundred. Okay, so they kind of they're kind of yani when they, when they say this when they say no, what does the zero point nine five mean? Uh, they're pretty much asking for what what is our r? What's the rate r? So how would you find the one? How would you find the r? Very simple. You just equal it. Since our one plus r over one hundred, we found that it's zero point nine five. You just equal it. one plus r over one hundred equals zero point nine five. And you should have on your calculator, you should be able to solve this. The calculator can solve this. But for those who can't solve it on a calculator, move on to the other side. You're going to get, I'm going to continue down here, okay? You're going to get R over 100 equals minus 0 0.05. Because 0 0.95 minus 1 is 0, minus 0 0.05. Then multiply by 100, you get R equals minus 5. Okay, so our rate is minus 5. Okay, so that's our percentage, minus 5%, right? So that's our rate. So, since it's negative, obviously, it's going to be decreasing, right? It's decreasing, not increasing. So, it's going to be decreasing by 5%. That's it. 
Okay, uh, question six. Consider the function f of x equals 4 to the power of x. Okay, what is true? So here they're asking us um, the characteristics of the graph. And if we take a look at the notes I wrote yesterday, uh, over here, okay, right here, the exponential graph, right? Uh, we said the any exponential function a to the x, why can't I add? Any exponential function a to the x, we said that the domain is any real number. So x can be any number, right? But the range is always y greater than b, right? y is always greater than b. That's the range. So let's see here. One thing I forgot to mention is that the graph a to the x, okay, a to the x, only a to the x, always passes through, let me erase this here, always passes through, through 0, 1, always, okay? So over here, let's, let's solve this. f of x equals 4 to the power of x. Obviously, we said the domain is all real numbers, okay? Is the range... All real numbers? Obviously not. We said the range is y is greater than b. And in this case, we don't have any b, so it's going to be y greater than 0. That's our range. And the asymptote is always y equals b. And in this case, we don't have any b, so y equals 0 is the asymptote, right? So the horizontal asymptote is the x-axis. Okay, do you guys know what the x-axis is? The x-axis is this thing over here, right? Is the blue line down here, right? And do you know that the x-axis is when y equals 0 because any point on this x-axis y equals 0 so that's why when we say y equals 0 other people call it the x-axis okay so we can say the x-axis is the horizontal asymptote it intersects the y-axis at 0 comma 1 of course does it intersect the x-axis at 0 comma 1 okay let's look at the point 0 comma 1 0 comma 1 would be this point here uh sorry 0 comma 1 would be this point over here right uh, I'll draw it in red actually to make it easier. It would be this red point, 0, comma 1. Is that the x-axis? Obviously not. That's the y-axis, right? So it intersects the y-axis, not the x-axis. So the only three here that are correct, the domain is all real numbers. The horizontal asymptote is the x-axis because y equals it. It's this red line, yeah, which is the x-axis. And the y-axis, uh, sorry, it intersects the y-axis at 0, comma 1, as does every other exponential graph. But then part B, Okay, uh, they're saying select the picture that represents the graph of f. Okay, uh, f of x, they said, is 4 to the x. So we want which one has the graph of 4 to the x. So let's see, which one has the graph of 4 to the x. What are the characteristics of the graph? We said the characteristics of the graph, okay, of any, sorry, of any exponential function. The characteristics are the domain is any real number, right? So the x can go for infinity and get, go for infinity, left and right. The range is y greater than b. So in this case, in this case, let's see. In this case, it has to be y must be, why just stop writing? We said y must be greater than 0, right? Because always greater than b. In 4, comma, uh, 4 to the power of x, y is greater than b so here in this case there's no b so y has to be greater than zero we said that it always passes through zero comma one okay and we said uh the domain is is all real numbers so let's take a look here it passes through zero comma one and it's y y is greater than zero it's always greater than zero right okay but one thing here is that it's decreasing when did i ever say that the exponential functions are decreasing. The exponential functions are increasing. Unless they say 4 to the power of negative x. Okay. If they say 4 to the power of negative x, that's when it starts decreasing. But in this case, do you see any negatives? It's just 4 to the power of x. So obviously the first one's wrong. The second one. Does it pass through 0, 1? 0, 1 is... Oh, oh my, no. I'm trying to... Can I not draw the point? This point, 0, 1, right? Does it pass through it? It doesn't. This point here, it passes through 0, 1, right? It's increasing, and it's always greater than 0. You see, it's above the y equals 0. It's above it. So it should be this one. But And let's check the last one just to make, uh, make sure. It doesn't pass through 0, 1, and it goes under y equals 0. So also that's wrong. So the correct one here is this. Because it's increasing, okay? 
it's increasing passes through 0 comma 1 okay uh, and y is always greater than 0 question 7 uh, okay okay this is pretty easy uh, area of hgi over hgj is k over 25 where what is k okay you guys know the area of any triangle area of triangle 1 over area of triangle 2 okay always equals uh, side 1 over side 2 squared so we need two sides okay we need two corresponding sides so let's take a look here we have hgi which i'm going to draw in red hgi and then you have hgj which i'm going to draw in blue hgj okay you have these two triangles uh, and we need uh, hgi over hgj so that means we want a side from hgi so uh, let's write area of area of triangle oh no, of triangle hgi over area of triangle hgj what would it be it's always side from hgi over a side from hgj and then square okay let's take a look hgi is the red triangle okay i'm gonna draw and use red to draw okay we can use uh let's see the hypotenuse obviously this angle here is right yeah this is right so the hypotenuse here would be 15 okay always the hypotenuse is the easiest way easiest side to work with okay so let's take 15 from hgr now we want the hypotenuse of hgj from hgj we really don't have much to work with okay because from hgi i only have one side to work with and that's the hypotenuse that's why i didn't take any other number from hgi like look 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 at the triangle hgi i don't have any other side so you ask walid why did you take the hypotenuse because look man i don't have any other side other than the hypotenuse from this red triangle so we took the hypotenuse of hgi that means i have to also take the hypotenuse of hgj okay let me draw hgj again in blue hgj okay that means I have to take the right angles here, right? That means I have to take the hypotenuse of this blue triangle also because they have to be corresponding. You can't just pick any two random sides. Okay, so now HGJ. Where's the hypotenuse? If the right angle is up here, that means the hypotenuse would be up the two, so it's going to be GJ. Can I find it? Obviously, I can. If this side is 15, this side is 20, can I find the hypotenuse? Of course, I can. The uh, GJ squared used Pythagoras theorem. GJ squared equals 15 squared plus 20 squared. And you get GJ equals... 25 okay just do it on your calculator so that means i found the hypotenuse okay it's 25 but you have to square okay you have to s1 over s2 squared you can't just keep it so 15 over 25 squared and you should get 9 over 25 if i'm not wrong let me do it on my calculator yeah you got you get 9 over 25 if you do it on your calculator. Uh, question 8. Okay, Murina bought 5 bags of garden soil. Okay, so 5 bags of garden soil, they were all at the same price. So let's call the price X. Okay, the bags were discounted by 40% Okay, of the original price. At checkout, she used a $10 coupon that she applied towards the entire purchase. She ended up paying $32. What was the original price of the bag? okay let's say the price was x right so x and we bought five bags so we bought five x right the bags were discounted by 40 percent okay that means 40 uh, sorry no no if you're discounting anything you can use the grade five way the grade five way is to use 40 over 100 of any number let's say i had a bag that cost a hundred dollars okay and it discounted 40 percent you would do 40 over 100 times a hundred dollars equals forty dollars and then you do you subtract that discount and you get sixty this is the grade five way if you use the grade five way here it will work but it's way longer and i don't want you to waste your time okay if you're discounting anything by x percent okay this is take this rule or let's say p percent okay discounting anything by p percent that means you're going to be paying one minus p percent of the, the original thing okay so here uh sorry no not one well my one minus would work but, uh you change the one to 100 because one is 100 percent and when when i'm saying i'm discounting x if i'm saying i'm discounting x by 40 percent 
that means what am I going to be paying? I'm going to be paying 60%, right? Why 60%? Because I did, what am I doing? I did 1 minus 40%. And 1 minus 40% is the same as saying 1 minus 0 0.4. Because 40% is a 0 0.4. Okay, which is 0 0.6, which is 60%. You can do this in your head. You don't have to write it. Okay, if I'm discounting anything by by X percent, if I'm discounting by 40%, just do 100 minus 40 that's 60%. So that means I'm paying 60%. Okay, so Anna, I'm paying 60% of the 5x since it got discounted by 40%. This is just for those who don't know it. If some people already know this, most people should already know this. At the checkout, she used a $10 coupon. Okay, so if you're applying a $10 coupon, that means you're paying $10 less. So she paid $10 less, so that means I subtract 10 from the price. This whole thing is the price. She paid $60, 60 percent of 5x, and then she used a ten dollar coupon. So she subtracted ten. What was the total? Thirty two. How would I solve this? Very easy. Take ten to the other side, so you get sixty percent of five x equals forty two, because plus ten. Huh? Then sixty percent of five x. You could uh, you could do this. Uh, Either way you want, you can multiply 60% by 5 and you get 3, okay? Uh, or you could just multiply by 100 on both sides. Just And I like saying 60% of 5x. 60% of 5x is the same as saying 60 over 100 times 5x equals 42, okay? Uh, if you multiply 60 over 100 times 5, you get 3. So 3x three equals 42, x equals 14, okay? Very simple. And these are just... Uh, word problems Okay, this one's uh, it's a quite it's quite tricky. Okay. It took me a while to figure it out um, In the given figure the area of ABCD is 18 square units a B C D is 18 square units. Okay, the area of it P and Q are the midpoints. Okay, so P here P here uh, let me write it in red P is the midpoint so that means this equals this and as well as Q is also the midpoint, so if I draw here Q, this equals this. Okay. The area of the parallelogram BPDQ. B, P, D, Q. Actually, let me draw that in a different color. Let's go. B, P, D, Q. Let me make it a bit thicker, actually. Uh, B, P, D, Q. Okay, they want the area of this parallelogram. How much is it? Okay, let's take a look. What do we have given? Always, always, please look at what you have given. Okay, they gave me the area of ABCD is 18 square units. And you know, the area of ABCD is equal to length times width, right? Because it's a rectangle, it's way too thick. Let's see, ABCD, what's the length of ABCD? Obviously, it's going to be BC, right? Which is equal to PC times the width. CD, right? Okay. And they told me that this is equal to 18. So BC times CD, they said it's equal to 18. Okay. Until now, very simple. I'm working very simple. They're saying they want the area of BPDQ. Okay. BPDQ. BPDQ is a parallelogram. And you know the area of parallelogram is base times height. Okay. What's the area of uh, this parallelogram? It's going to be the base, which is down here. BP, right? This is P. BP, so the area of the parallelogram is going to be BP times the height. The height, you know, is it has to be perpendicular. You can't take this blue part, you know, you have to take DC, right? That's the height. This red line is the same as DC. You can say it's also AB, whatever you want, but in order, you know, we use BC over here, so let's just, uh, so we used CD over here, so let me use CD. Okay, you can use AB if you want. I don't any. Yani, you get the same answer, but use CD because you use CD over here. So let's just use it here again. So the area of the parallelogram, the area of parallelogram is BP times CD, right? Base times the height CD. Okay. Then they told us P and Q are the midpoints of BC and DA. Okay, since P is the midpoint. Okay, let me clean this up a bit. Since P is the midpoint, that means BP, right, is half of BC, right? 
So we can say BP is half of BC because uh, they said it's a midpoint, right? It's the midpoint, so that means this is half of the whole thing. Divides into two equal halves. Okay, can I can I uh, get rid of this fraction? Of course I can. Uh, multiply by two here, multiply by two here to get rid of the over two. You'll get two BP equals BC, okay? Or for those of you who don't know how to multiply by two, you know, some people don't use it like this, okay? BP equals one over two BC is the same as saying BP equals uh, BC over 2 because 1 over 2 times BC is just BC over 2 and then you cross multiply other people use it like this this is why I'm showing this way and you know, to cross multiply because some people they prefer cross multiplication okay BP uh, BC equals 2 BP okay so now I have an expression where I know what BC is right BC is 2 BP so over here instead of BC in the original equation for the rectangle I can write 2, two BP so 2 BP instead of BC times CD equals 18. Okay, can you see some sort of correlation? Of course you can, right? So the area of the parallelogram we said is BP CD. But now I have 2 BP times CD equals 18. How can I make this the same? I have to get rid of this 2. How do I do that? I just divide by 2, divide by 2, and I get BP times CD equals 9. So the area BP times CD is 9. Okay. Uh, if you want an easy in the, in the exam, just divide this by 2 and it should work. Okay. And you get 9. I mean, according to what I did now, that should work every single time in the exam. Okay. Just divide by 2. Uh, question 10. Okay, uh, I don't like these questions. Okay, uh, for this question, they're saying they want the image of ABC under an enlargement with uh, the center at the origin. Okay, everything at the origin and also at the origin. So that really makes everything way easier. Okay, they're saying the enlargement with scale factor negative 2 and rotation of 90 degrees clockwise. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is do the enlargement. Uh, always, I tell you, when working with these types of questions, uh, write down your three points that you want to uh, transform. My first point is 0, negative 1. Second point is 2, comma negative 1. Uh, and negative 1, comma 1. These are my first three points. I have to enlarge them with a center at the origin with scale factor negative 2. Since it's at the origin, all you have to do is just multiply the scale factor by every x and every y. Since it's at the origin. But maybe in the exam they get you, uh, you know, well, Maybe in the exam, uh, they get you, I have to write it again. Yeah. Maybe in the exam, they get you uh, around a point negative one, one, okay? And I want zero comma negative one, two comma negative one, uh, and negative one, one. Okay, so if they said in the exam, around a certain point, you have to use the formula x prime equals kx plus one minus k times x of the center, and y prime equals ky, plus 1 minus k times y of the center. So, since they only want the origin now, all this al fadi but just in case, you have to use these formulas. Okay, so since they want the origin, I just have to multiply everything by negative 2. So, 0 times negative 2 is 0, obviously. Negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2. Okay, negative 2 times 2 here is negative 4. And uh, negative 2 times negative 1 is 2. Okay, negative 2 times negative 1 is 2, negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Okay, so we got these three points. Now, rotation of 90 degrees clockwise. For a 90 degree clockwise rotation, since it's about the origin, huh? if it's not about the origin, I hope they don't bring it about a certain point. I, ho I really hope they bring it for you up around the origin. If it's not around the origin, you have to subtract, uh, uh, you have to subtract, find the translation, then apply the uh, rule and then add it to your center of rotation. Um, I really hope they don't bring it for you. Uh, but in Mohammed, 90 degrees clockwise about the origin. 90 degrees clockwise, you do a comma b. The rule is a comma b goes to uh, clockwise. That means it goes down. So uh, b minus a. Okay. This is for a 90 degree clockwise rotation. So all these points, I have to change it to b minus a. So that means I swap them first. Two comma zero. And I switch the sign of the second one. 
negative zero stays zero, right? So I can't have negative zero, so I just keep it as zero. Okay, then negative four, two, it becomes two, negative four, right? But I swap the sign of the second one. So it was negative, now it becomes positive, okay? Uh, so you just apply the rule, and then negative two, two becomes negative two, two, but I have to change the sign of the second one, so it becomes negative, because I'm just applying the rule. A, B becomes, switch both of them, but make the second one negative. Okay. Now you just plot these points, 2, comma 0 is over here, okay, 2, uh, comma 4 is over here, and two, negative 2, negative 2 is over here. Okay, question 11. I, I hope, you know, these questions are kind of tricky, but, you know, um, I hope you don't find it that hard. Can I zoom out? Oh, no, that's enough, okay. Uh, question 11, they gave me a sequence U, uh, they gave me a sequence V, sequence F, and sequence Q. For sequence A, uh, they want us to find the general term. Let's see, are we adding or are we multiplying? Obviously, we're multiplying. 3 to 12 is times 4, 12 to 48 is times 4, 48 to 192 is times 4. So obviously, this is a geometric progression. I'm not going to rewrite the formulas from last week. But for any geometric progression, the general term Gn is always G1 times R to the power of N minus 1. So the first term is 3. So we write 3 times r. What's my rate? It's 4 to the power of n minus 1. n minus 1 just stays. Okay, so my general term is 3 times 4 times uh, uh, to the power of n minus 1. So 3 times 4 to the power of n minus 1. How about sequence v? Uh, for sequence v, uh, <clears throat> this time I, th we're not multiplying. We're just adding 4, right? We're just adding 4 plus 4 plus 4 and so on and so forth. Uh, so that means we're using an arithmetic progression. And for an arithmetic progression, it's always dn plus uh, b, right? Uh, the difference d in this case is 4, so an equals 4n plus b. And b is always a1 minus d, right? So our a1 is 7 and d is 4, so 7 minus 4 is 3, so my b is 3. So my arithmetic progression an is 4n plus 3. fn. Fn, in this case, it's it's a bit different, okay? Whenever you're working with fractions, okay, whenever you're working with, uh, oh, let me keep this, uh, times four. Okay, whenever you're working with fractions, it's different. So from two to three, obviously, we're going plus one, right? Then from three to four, plus one. Okay, so, so we're going plus one, plus one. But down, you don't look at the denominators, okay? You don't do that. You only look at the numerator with respect to the denominator. So what I'm saying is, from 2 to 3 plus 1, but you don't go from 5 to 6 plus 1. No, 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 no. You go from 2 to 6. Okay? So you only work with the numerator and the other denominator. Okay? You can't work with denominator to denominator. So let's see. Up we had plus 1, and we put it, plus 1. But from 2 to 6, that's uh, plus 4, right? From 2 to 6 is plus 4. So down we put plus 4. And if you want to prove it, you can see. From 2 to 3 plus 1. And then from uh, 2 to 6 plus 4. Then from 3 to 4 again plus 1. But from 3 to 7 plus 4, right? Then from 4 to 5 again plus 1. But from 4 to 8 plus 4. Okay, that's how you do it. You work with the numerator and the denominator of the other one. Okay, so we put plus 4. Then for QN, okay... Obviously, uh, 5 to 12, 7, 12 to 25, that's 13, then 25 to 44, it's 19. Okay, so that means 7 to 13, we have 6, and 13 to 19, we have 6. Okay, that means, obviously, we're working with a quadratic because we have two separate sets of differences. And for the quadratic, if you remember, 2a equals constant, okay, 3a plus b equals first term, and a plus b plus c equals uh, a plus B plus C equals the f uh, f this first difference. Sorry, uh, A plus B plus C equals first term. Okay, so in this case, 2A will be equal to 6. That means A equals 3. Okay, because 2A equals the constant difference. Then 3A plus B is first difference. So 3 times A, which we said is 3, plus B equals first difference, which is 7. Uh, that means 9 plus B. Uh, equals 7, that means b equals minus 2, and then a plus b plus c, so a plus b plus c equals the first term, which is 5, right? 
that means a which is 3 b which is minus 2 uh, plus c equals 5 that means 1 plus c equals 5 that means c equals 4 so i have a is 3 b is minus 2 but they already put the minus so be careful and then c which is 4 question 12 it's taking too long okay this one uh, i'll give you uh, the answer for it in the exam okay in the exam it was uh, 0 0.7 uh, seven and then nine. Okay. Uh, some people put zero point seven seven. I don't know why. The in the exam they gave us zero point seven 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 seven, right? Okay. It's only one decimal being repeated, so you only put zero point seven. You don't put zero point seven seven. No, 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 no. Just because in the quiz they put two numbers doesn't mean you put. And I told you in in the in the video last week, if you have only one number being repeated, then you only put one decimal. You don't put two decimal points. I don't know why people, they got that mistake last week. It's a very silly mistake to get. Okay, in Mohim, this is how it's going to come in the exam. For people who want to know how to solve, uh, I'll repeat. 0 0.878787. The first term will always be the repeated part. Okay? And then if you want to put it in, uh, if you want to put this part, you can just put it in a calculator. Just spam 87878787. Spam it, spam it. Spam this in a calculator and then press equal and you're going to get 29 over 33. Okay, that's the way to do it on the calculator. And it works every time, so I'm not going to waste your time. Okay, uh, question 13. Uh, geometric progression. Okay, geometric progression. When you have, when you want the middle term, the middle term in a geometric progression, to find it, it's always in geometric progression. The geometric mean is equal to radical AC. These are last week's formulas. So in this case, it's going to be GM equals radical 4 times 25, which is going to be equal to 10. Okay. Uh, question 14. I'm going to go through this a bit quicker. This is repeat, I think, also from last week. If it's a geometric progression, they want the 10th term. Geometric progression, you know that the GN, any number, is equal to G1 which in this case, gn equals g1 times r to the power of n minus 1, right? So in this case, it's going to be equal g1, which is 2 to the 7 over 3 to the 6, times r, 3 over 2, to the power of n minus 1. In this case, n is 10, right? 10th term, so 10 minus 1, which is going to be equal to 2 to the 7 over 3 to the 6 times 3 over 2 to the power of 9, because 10 minus 1 is 9. Okay, you do this in a calculator, and you get 27 over 4, okay? Question 15, uh, okay, we're back to exponential functions. In the below pictures, the graph of y equals 1.7 to the power of x is shown as a dotted curve. Pick the picture where it's accompanied by the graph of 1.7x, 1.7 uh, to the power of x plus 2. Okay, let me, yeah, Allah. okay. Okay, what did we say when we have y equals a to the x and then y equals a to the x plus 5? This is the same graph, but just shifted 5 upwards, right? So in this case, what's the difference between uh, 1.7 to the power of x and 1.7 to the power of x plus 2? You just shift 2 upwards, right? 2 upwards. So 1.7 to the power of x is the same as any other exponential graph y is greater than 0, right, because there's no b, and it passes through 0, 1, the same as any other exponential graph. Which one passes through 0, 1? Well, actually, all of these dotted curves are the same, right? But we have to see which one is two, unit, and two units above it. Is it this one? Obviously, no, right? Uh, two units above. If it's two units above, by the way, that means it passes through 0, 3, yeah? Uh, ju that's just for some people, you know, they, they like to see these t these things. This is, It's going to pass through 0, 0,3 if it's 2 units above, right? Since this passes through 0, 0,1, like every other exponential graph. Remember, I told you, every exponential graph passes through 0, 0,1. So, if it's plus 2, that means 2 units above, so 0, 0,3. So, this one here, it passes through 0, 0,3. But look, look at this part of the graph. They're both together. Can that happen? Obviously not, right? It's supposed to be 2 units upwards. Okay? But here, it passed through 0, 0,3, and look, there are two units above. By the way, also, to prove that this is wrong, in 1.7x plus 2, we said y is always greater than b. So y, in this case, we have b is 2. 
y is greater than 2 okay so in this case 2 is up here how can it go under 2 if this is 1.7 to the power of x plus 2 it can't right so like I said that further proves that this one is wrong because it can't go below 2 it has to always be greater than 2 okay what is the asymptote the asymptote is always like I said y equals b okay and in this case it's 2 so y equals 2 is my asymptote okay as you can see here the graph as it approaches why did it as it approaches 2 right as it approaches 2 it starts flatlining yeah it starts flatlining it stops going below 2 because that's the asymptote it can't cross 2 it may seem like it touches 2 but there's a tiny 0 0.00000 part that separates it from from the line y equals 2 okay that's the asymptote okay uh, question 16 uh, in uh, same thing 1.7 to the x and then they have 1.7 x minus 2 okay when you have adding or subtracting in the power that means now I'm not going up or down that means it's horizontal it's going left or right yeah and since we're subtracting remember with a horizontal shift it's always the opposite when you subtract you go to the right but when you add you go to the left so since we're subtracting that means it's 2 to the right right so 1.7 to the x same thing it passes through 0 comma 1 right uh, pass through 0 comma 1 over here and it stops at y equals 0 as normal right uh, because uh, the asymptote is y equals 0 is normal stuff is y equals 0 as they this is 1.7 to the x but if I want to shift it 2 to the right okay let's start over here let's start with this one here obviously it's two units to the left and we don't want that right we that's wrong here it's two units downward obviously that's wrong right but here if you look at this point it's the same point but two units to the right so that's what we want to see and what's the asymptote remember the asymptotes always y equals b and in this case we don't have any b all right so y equals zero okay very easy question 17 what uh, okay this is the value uh, sorry this uh, this diagram below displays the graph of y equals a to the x. What is the value of a? Okay, a very way, easy way to solve this is just see when x equals 1. Okay, when x equals 1, uh, y equals uh, y equals a. Because, you know, anything a to anything to the power of 1 gets you that number, right? So, like 2 to the 1 gets you 2, 7 to the 1 gets you 7, right? So, how can I know... Uh, yeah. I don't know why it keeps opening. How can I know what my a is? I just look at when x equals 1. When x equals 1, I get the point 3. So, what to the power of 1 gets me 3? Obviously, 3 to the power of 1 gets me 3. So, my a is 3. So, just look. When x equals 1, what does y equal? And in this case, y equals 3. So, that means a is 3. Question 18. Okay. Ah, this recording took time, huh? If 2, 81 is a point on a to the x, then minus 2, 81 belongs to the graph a to the x plus 4. Okay, if we're shifting, if we're adding 4 in the power, remember, if we're adding in the power, that means it's horizontal, right? So it's either left or right. And since we're adding, you do the opposite. So since we're adding, it means 4 to the left, right? 4 to the left. So if I had 2, 81, and I want 4 to the left. Where is it going to go? 2. 4 to the left becomes minus 281. Just do 2 minus 4. So that means my x becomes minus 281. Okay? That's it for this recording. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I, I know this recording may have been a bit longer. Uh, but it's new material. Uh, I'm going to try. You know, I always try my best to explain. Anyways, good luck uh, in your exam. Uh, thank you so much for watching.